So welcome. Thank you for joining us for WordPress Accessibility Meetup, How to Write Accessible Website Copy. I have a few announcements to kick off. If you haven't been before, we have a Facebook group. You can find it if you search WordPress Accessibility on Facebook, or the full URL is facebook.com slash groups slash WordPress dot accessibility. And that is a great way to connect with people in between meetups and get answers to questions, share things you're working on, get feedback, answer other people's questions, help other people. Uh, so it's a, it's a great group that's been growing pretty quickly and we would welcome all of you to join it. Everyone always asks, is this being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded two places, to the cloud and locally, because I'm nervous about that. Uh, and the recording will be available. It takes us about two weeks to get corrected captions and a full transcript, and then we post those up. If you want to find other upcoming meetups or you want to find all of the recordings from past events, if you go to equalizedigital.com slash meetup, that is where you're going to be able to find those. Uh, the other way is please join our email list. If you join our email list, which you can do if you go to equalizedigital.com slash focus dash state, then we send out emails that tell you about upcoming events. We also will include when the recordings are there and other news related to accessibility around the web. And the final place where you can do it is we had quite a few people tell us that they wanted to be able to just listen to the episodes. So we will take, or the episodes, the meetups. So we take the audio only and we put it on our podcast, Accessibility Craft, so you can find the audio from the meetup at accessibilitycraft.com. Uh, a quick note, we do have live captions today. We have a human who is typing our captions for us. So if you haven't, you might want to toggle those on. Uh, but we unfortunately don't get funding from the WordPress Community Foundation to cover the cost of live captions. They've told us you need to go out and find sponsors if you want to do that. So we are always looking for sponsors to help us cover the cost of captioning and the post-event transcription, which is also something that we pay for. So if your company is interested in helping to support this meetup and ensure that it can be fully accessible to everyone who wants to attend it, uh, please reach out to us. You can reach myself and Paula, my co-organizer, if you email meetup at equalizedigital.com. Uh, so if you are interested in sponsoring, please reach out to us. Also, if you're interested in speaking, we are booking some speakers for Q2 of this year and looking, planning out some topics for into the summer as well. So if you would be interested in speaking or if you don't want to speak, but there's something you really want to learn about, that's another great way to message us. And then we can go to try and see if we can find a speaker for that topic. So I haven't introduced myself yet, but I am Amber Hines. I'm the CEO of a company called Equalize Digital, and we are the organizers of the meetup. We are a benefit, uh, B corporation, which means we try to do a lot of good in the world. And we have a plugin called Accessibility Checker that scans websites on WordPress for accessibility problems and provides reports right in the WordPress dashboard. You can find out more on our website, which I've said about a million times, but it's equalizedigital.com. Um, we are on Twitter. I still call it Twitter at Equalized Digital. If you want to tag us there as well. We have a sponsor that I want to thank for today's meetup, Ivy Cat. Ivy Cat and Eric, who's the head of Ivy Cat, um, have been a phenomenal supporter of the meetup and have helped to cover the cost of live captions for quite a few of our events over the past year, and we greatly appreciate it. Uh, Ivy Cat helps clients and agencies create, market, and maintain high-performing WordPress websites and web applications that are fast, easy to use, accessible, and get results. Their website, Care Plans, 
They, or they offer website care plans, search engine optimization, and accessibility services to help clients grow and succeed without the stress and headaches of doing it alone. So I recommend that everyone go learn more about Ivy Cat. You can find them at Ivy, I-V-Y, cat, C-A-T, dot com. Uh, we also always encourage people to thank our sponsors on Twitter or LinkedIn. On Twitter, they're at Ivy Cat Web. Just send them a quick tweet that says, thank you for sponsoring, because that helps them. They don't always attend our meetups, and that helps them to know that one, we are fulfilling our duties and shouting out to them and let them know that it matters and that what they're doing makes a difference. Uh, we have a couple of upcoming meetups that I want to shout out to you. So first of all, in two weeks, roughly on Monday, January 15th, I'm gonna be giving a presentation about building a low code accessible WooCommerce website. Uh, so if you are interested in figuring out what the status of accessibility with WooCommerce is and whether or not you can build an accessible WooCommerce website without having to bring in a developer to do a ton of code, definitely come to that. It's going to be a case study presentation. I'm actually building the website right now um, and testing it and trying to figure out what I can do without involving our dev team. So it will be super interesting. And then on Thursday, February 1st, so this same time slot, we are going to have uh, Michaela Letterman presenting on doing more with less ARIA. And on Monday, February 19th at 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, we will have Danielle Zaccaro presenting on trends to avoid in 2024, which will be super interesting. They'll be talking about um, different design trends or website trends that we might see out there and why you should not jump on the bandwagon for them. So I am really excited and let me add her up here so you can see her to introduce Abby Wood. Abby and I have chatted a little bit um, last year and beyond that and I know she does a lot of phenomenal things in the WordPress community around copy. So Abby is a content strategist and copywriter for over 12 years and is the founder of the Content Lab. Her team of talented copywriters serve digital agencies around the world with engaging, persuasive, and accessible copy that they write. And then I think the agencies are able to use that either for their clients or on their own websites as well. So welcome, Abby. We're excited to have Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. What an introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'll let you take over. While she's doing that, one last note, we are going to hold questions until the end, but there will be a Q&A period. Um, I do recommend, please use the Q&A um, feature to give us questions rather than the chat. I will try to watch the chat for them, but they can get buried, especially when we have this many attendees. So if you don't mind putting them in the Q&A, then um, we will answer them after Abby's done. So take it away, Abby. Wonderful. Thank you so much, lovely Amber. And uh, thank you all for, for coming today. Um, very, uh, very excited to be here. Um, not at all nervous that we've got 199 participants. That is, uh, that's, that's quite a crowd. Um, but very, very exciting that all of you wonderful people are so interested in uh, creating accessible website copy. And um, so, yeah, that is what we're chatting about today. Um, how to write accessible website copy, writing towards a more inclusive future online. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I am a content strategy, a uh, content strategy. Content strategist and owner of the Content Lab. Uh, we are based in Ireland, uh, down in County Waterford. Uh, most of our clients are in the US, um, Canada, Australia, a few in the UK and a few across Europe as well. Um, so as the lovely Amber already said, I've been a copywriter and content strategist for the last 12 years. Um, and during that time, I've been um, incredibly lucky to have been uh, an advisor to the National Disability Authority of Ireland um, when they were redoing their own website text um, for advice and uh, kind of their content guidelines around how to produce um, high quality 
uh, accessible content um, for their their readers, their members, um, and their team as well. Um, so that was a, an incredibly fun opportunity um, and a, a, a privilege as well. Um, I'm also a mentor at YouGurus, um, so that's a digital agency training program. Um, and as part of that, I would help digital agencies create online content, give them advice on um, how best to do it and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think uh, after that, uh, we'll we'll dive straight in, I think. Um, and I've, I've already said to the lovely Paula and uh, Amber, if I am talking too fast, when I get excited, I tend to speed up. Um, so please just nip it in the bud and tell me to uh, to, to slow down there. Um, but yeah, OK, wonderful. So what are we chatting about today? Uh, we are talking accessible content. Um, so just a heads up before we get started, I just want to say that um, we are all human. Uh, we're here to be better and to write better copy and better content and better connect with our audiences um, and to make the, the online world a more inclusive place. But we are human at the end of the day and nobody's perfect. So um, just to keep that in mind, uh, I'm going to give you a, a set of guidelines and stuff to, to follow and best practice tips and stuff. Um, but even just even if you implement 15% of, of kind of my, my tips and tricks and stuff today is a, a big improvement um, and, and should go a long way. Um, so anyway, without further ado, uh, we're going to be covering what makes good copying content. So why we create online content um, and, and what to keep in mind uh, about making it good, high quality stuff. Um, then we're going to deep dive into what makes copy accessible. Um, it isn't a subject that is really published very much on um so it's if, if we have a look at the um the guidelines and stuff there's not a huge amount around actually writing the text um so i've i've created this this little um slideshow and stuff um to kind of hopefully provide a guideline of of everything hopefully um but again human so may have missed something but hopefully we'll cover the majority of it um and you can go forth and, and use this um then we're going to go into best practice um, and then we're going to have a look at things to consider for different audiences um, with um, different needs, different capabilities. Um, then we're going to have a look at getting the balance right. So um, how to balance creating good copy and good content with um, the different audiences that you're writing for. Then we're going to have a look at maintaining standards and governance. Um, and then we're going to go into Q&A. Uh, so we will see. I'm going to bring my little timer over here just so I uh, know to keep on track. Um, we'll see how we get on. Um, super excited. Let's let's dive straight in. So what makes good content? Why do we create content? What is copying content? Um, I'm going to give you two definitions of copy and content because the two are are used interchangeably and um, copy um usually refers to website text and um, content in written content and um, so ignoring video and all that good stuff and um, typically refers to blog posts pdf um ebooks um quizzes that kind of thing so when i when we're talking about copy we're talking about um conversion copy we're talking about sales pages we're talking about landing pages actual website text and um, micro copy so the the text on buttons um and content is is kind of a catch-all of all of it um so just just if you're wondering what is the difference between the two of them um and and why they're used in different places throughout this and online that's that's what the the basics is um i've also tried to make this um this presentation is inclusive as possible and um, because kind of I know that all of us are coming from very different backgrounds and um, with different levels of knowledge when it comes to creating website text and um, the web in general. Uh, I know that we've got plenty of digital agencies here. We've got um, organizations. We've got a, a wide range of, of people here. So I've tried to keep it as accessible, I guess, as possible to everyone across the board. So if you find some of it a little bit basic and um, there'll be other stuff that's a little bit more in depth um, kind of further on. And um, if you're completely um, brand new to it, um, I've tried to explain kind of the basics as well. So hopefully there's something for everyone in here. Um, but anyway, that caveat is done. Uh, what makes good content? Why do we write copy and content online? So we're building connections. The 
the vast majority of humans nowadays get their information and their connections to other humans online, whether it's social media, whether it's websites, whether it's forums, whatever it is, we're building connections. We're helping people find their people and the people that can help them overcome issues or challenges that they're currently facing, whether that is how to uh, how to apply for a, a dog owning license online or whether that's how to um, whether that's how to fix a broken toilet or whether that is how to um, find a, a new community to join. That is that is what we're doing. Um, so we are building connections online. And I think that is that is the core of creating content is to always keep in mind the end goal of your users, of your readers. What are you hoping to help them with and what are they looking for help with? And that's going to greatly influence what content you're creating and how you're creating it. Um, it needs to be written with purpose. So persuasive, engaging, educational community. Every single piece of content has a purpose. If you're not sure what the purpose is, it's it's going to be quite generic. It's going to be very wishy-washy um, and it's going to be confusing for the reader. So clarity is everything when it comes to content. Um, and of course, it needs to be unique and in the relevant brand voice and tone. Um, I have not been, uh, if any of you are familiar with, with me previously, uh, you'll know that I am uh, not very quiet on uh, my dislike of, of AI writing. Um, I truly believe that online content should have a human touch. Um, so if you are using AI writers, make sure that you're editing it and putting your own unique spin on it. Um, and again, unique content, we're not just creating more and more content and adding to the online noise. We're, we're creating purposeful content that helps and furthers that's that's what we're aiming to do um so yeah that that's what good content is uh well written it's with purpose it makes sense and it uh it's uniquely you and speaks to the people that you're trying to help so what makes copy accessible this this is a question this is a question and a half so it's it's much more than just the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, which I think is how you pronounce that. I'm not entirely sure. If it isn't, uh, please correct me. Um, but I'm going to say WCAG go forward. Um, truly accessible copy is making our readers feel included. And it's making them know that they are in the right place. And that's what, for me, that is what accessible copy is. It is inclusion for everybody, regardless of backgrounds or um, diseases or conditions or whatever it is. It's, it's, we're making copy accessible, understandable and relevant to who we're speaking to. And at the end of the day, accessible writing is just good writing. If your writing isn't accessible, it's bad writing. Um, writing is is meant to be enjoyed. It is meant to be consumed. That that is that is that is what we're what we're about. Um, so, with that in mind, of what good copy is, different audiences with different needs. So, when when we look at accessibility in general terms of websites, we take into account colors. We take into account um, layouts. We take into account alt text, we take into account all of these different things. With language, there's a very specific um, subsection of things that we need to take into consideration. So reading level is would be a big one. Educational background. Um, English is a second language. So um, you will see a lot of brands and a lot of companies using uh, slang terms, colloquialisms. Um, so if I am guilty of that myself, you know, kind of like if you say, oh, let's not beat around the bush. That is very specific to your location. It's very specific to you um, knowing English inside and out. Um, you know, kind of as, as somebody that's written um, for kind of companies in like three continents, uh, you'll see that sometimes that doesn't translate. Lost in translation is a real thing, uh, which is itself its its own phrase that some people may not understand. Um, but yeah, it, it, there's, there's a lot to take into consideration. And a lot of this goes into knowing your audience intimately and knowing exactly who you're speaking to and who who you're expecting to be on your website so 
English as a second language is definitely something that we need to take into consideration. Um, again, colloquialisms, um, specific location, location specific phrases, um, slang words um, that, that kind of you take for granted almost as being um, understood across the board. Again, another one across the board uh, may not be understood by every reader that you have. Um, then we have dyslexia, dyscalculia, which I always mispronounce, I'm very sorry, uh, and written expression disorder. So written expression disorder um, may not be very well known for, for a lot of people, but that is especially um, relevant for if you have online forms or something like that. If somebody can't express themselves using words, you know, to... to explain how they're feeling or what they're looking for that's something that we need to take to take into consideration we also have gender inclusive language that is something that is is very specific to language um as well as imagery um you know kind of if say if uh, you know you're, you're working with um a wedding venue you know we we don't just uh, we don't we don't just speak of um husbands and brides husbands and wives you know kind of and we want to make sure that everyone is included um, same with the LGBTQIA plus inclusive language as well. You know, kind of we, we need to be mindful that we're not excluding people by overlooking not only their existence, but their interaction on your website. Uh, we also have physical impairments, uh, visual impairments, um, autism, ADHD and speech and language impairments. All of these things have... Um, need to be taken into consideration when we're writing website text or blog posts or quizzes, so, stuff like that. Um, so that there is a lot, and this goes back to me um, saying we're all human. There is a lot to take into consideration here um, and nobody is is perfect. So, you know, kind of you, you may overlook one or two of these and that's okay because we're all here just to, to, to try and improve how we show up let's with all of that taken into consideration let's have a look at the WCAG best practice and um, this is basically the overview of what is included in copy best best practice tips um or, or standards sorry so you know kind of unique page titles uh headings to convey meaning and structure so we're splitting up the text um and we are um we're signposting what the page is actually saying to the people that are, are browsing the web and uh, make, making link text meaningful and uh, meaningful text. A lot of this is all focused on just making it meaningful and relevant. Um, we've got transcripts and captions for multimedia, clear instructions um, and clarity and conciseness. Um, so these are all fantastic, but there's so much more to consider when you're writing website copy that is accessible. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna have a look and go go into this a little bit further. Um, and uh, yeah, with there's 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 a lot more to this than than seven bullet points. Um, and in the next few slides, we're going to be taking a look at um, we're gonna be taking a look at uh, kind of how to write accessible copy, things to take into consideration. Um, so some of it may be a little bit entry level for some people. Other others might be a little bit um kind of in depth um but there should be something for for everyone. So general best practice from a writer uh, is kind of so generally speaking we're using clear plain language and um, you can use the Hemingway app for this and um, we need to keep it um concise. We need to keep it um, uncomplicated. So we're not, if you, if you can say something in five words, say it in five words, don't expand on it to 10. Um, there, there is this, um, there is a habit um, with, with online writers um, and website owners and marketers and SEO experts, search engine optimization experts as well, um, that more is better, more is rarely better. When it comes to website copy, if you can say it in five words, say it in five words, get your point across and give your audience what they're looking for. Um, you know, quite if there's, there's nothing for me, there's nothing more frustrating than looking for an answer and having to scroll through 10 paragraphs for just that, that one sentence. I'd rather have the one sentence and then more information underneath that I didn't even know that I, that I needed to know um, and enjoying that. 
Uh, we also want to keep sentences short, so less than 21 words. Again, we're concise. One point per sentence. Um, so we want to keep it clear. We don't want to overcomplicate things. Um, and reading age. So reading age is a, is a, is a big thing. And I have um, kept this to uh, the US reading age. Um, there are plenty of stats kind of um, on the UK and uh, various other countries um, that, you know, the average reading age. Um, but in general, um, you can use the Hemingway app as well to um, assess the reading level that you're writing at. It's a fantastic tool. It's also free. So just Hemingway.app, um, feel free to go and have a look. Um, it'll also just, um, take your, your text from passive voice to active voice, which we're going to cover a little bit later as well. Um, but yeah, so the average US reading age is between seventh and eighth grade, so 12 to 14 years. Um, so with that in mind, um, and I have found this um, working with a few different um, government bodies um, and kind of health departments and that kind of thing, that there is um, a, a habit of making things more formal or making things sound more government-y, um, which isn't a word, but it is now for the moment. Um, so, you know, kind of the, it, keep it simple would be the, the overall the overall advice here. Um, you know, kind of we, we don't need to complicate things. You can you can still be professional. You can still be formal if, if that's what you're looking for without overcomplicating the words that you're using. Nobody should need a dictionary and a thesaurus to be able to understand your homepage. Um, so yeah, and you can also use the, uh, and I always mispronounce this as well, uh, the Flesh uh, Kincaid testing, and I know I've mispronounced that, I'm very sorry. Um, but yeah, you can you can use that to to assess um, your your um, your reading level as well. Um, but you can do that with the Hemingway app for free. Uh, make instructions simple and clear. Um, and I am going to go into uh, individual um, case uses of this as well, but these are just general breast best practice tips for the moment. So instructions, simple and clear. Um, if you need them to click a specific button, be very clear with that. Let them know what's going to happen when they click that button. Um, avoid directions like to the right or ones using colors. So obviously, you know, kind of we we have um, people that are colorblind and, um, you know, click on the green button. They don't, they won't be able to see the green button as compared to another button that is a similar color to them. Um, screen readers also absorb the content. Um, there's no left or right. So if you are looking for, um, you know, kind of um, click on the link to the right, they won't be able to click on the link to the right. So it's it. Yeah, it, it's definitely something that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, and again, slang terms, idioms, jargon, and metaphorical language. Um, if you are a writer, you probably love all of these things. I know I certainly do. I am very guilty of this myself. Um, but if if you want to create truly accessible writing um, for, a, for a broad audience, it's best to avoid these. Or if you want to use them, explain what they mean. You can always link out to to you know kind of an explanation and um, depending on on the the context, um. But yeah, we. I I think especially when it when it comes to um English as a second language uh users, it's for me. I'm I'm trying to learn a few different languages myself, and uh, I love learning local slang and you know completely different phrases and um, but I always need an explainer so um I think it's it's a nice way of harnessing that community as well it's making your reader feel more included if you use something like that but then you explain what it means as well um, exactly the same with abbreviations and acronyms so um you know kind of I'm in the digital agency world I know a lot of you guys are as well um and abbreviations for instance SEO Kind of a, a lot of people here are going to know exactly what SEO is, um, but for people that aren't in the industry or are new to to this this niche, um, you you'd want to spell it out that it's search engine optimization first, and it's always in the first instance on a page. So if you mention it across five different pages, in an ideal world, you'll be explaining it the first time you use it on that page every time, um, it, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I would yeah. <laughs> so in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, you could say this. I'm, I'm no. We'll stick to that for the moment. Yeah. So um, 
it depends on your on your on your audience as well though because some audiences will get this but we want to make sure those people that visit the site and don't get it have the explanation so that they feel welcome to your website and that they understand exactly what you're saying uh, I, I read a, a great piece earlier that was that was pretty much you know kind of right online writing is just trying to take uh one thought and one idea from one person's brain and translating it into something that another person's brain will understand um and that's exactly what it is we're we're communicating essential information um to to other people and other people interpret things differently um okay so if you are used to uh, the usual guidelines, um, you're probably already familiar with this point. And um, so we need to make sure that the website can be used with assistive technology. Um, and this is the, the pointers that are specific to the text side of things. Um, a very important thing that a lot of people overlook is to put meaningful words first in headings. So um, a lot of readers will skim nowadays. Um, and part of skimming is looking at headings, skipping the paragraph underneath, um, or they're reading the first few sentences, the first few sentences, the first few phrases in a sentence, and then skipping on to the next part. Um, so I've got this example here. Uh, accessibility guidance so they know it's accessibility first rather than guidance on accessibility it's just how the human brain um which my brain has just stopped doing it's how it processes the information that it's getting um so you're front loading it um you know kind of what's what's the thing uh that most people have an attention span of of five to eight seconds on a web on a web page at the moment um so yeah they what they want that information that they that they're looking for and they want it fast so we want to give it to them um a little bit about uh, layout so using numbered or bullet list to display information and um, you know keep your paragraphs nice and short as well kind of i always recommend people use a maximum of three sentences per paragraph um, and while we're getting into kind of layout, I know I said I wouldn't, but uh, we want to keep it uh, left aligned in general, um, just because of how uh, different people read the information and can actually absorb it. Um, and then we're using clear, simple and accurate call to actions. Um, so this this is a bugbear for, for quite a many copywriters out there. Um, you know, kind of there's there's always a pressure to be funny or pressure to be smarter with the call to actions and to really kind of go out of, you know, out of the ordinary. I'm a big fan of just call to action should say exactly what it does on the tin, which is another phrase slash saying that not everybody will be familiar with. So it is, um, it, it's, you're delivering what you're promising, basically. So um, call to action, call now. They know that they're going to call you now. That is it. Um, you know, kind of uh, submit form is they know they're submitting the form. They know what to expect once they hit that button. And they know what's going to happen on the website once they've clicked that button. Um. This is this is a, a, a quite a common mistake actually um, is hyperlinks. So a lot of um, not <laughs> a lot of a lot of websites have click here as the hyperlink text, and um, we don't want to be doing that. We want to be using read our resources or the the actual action that you're going to be delivering once they have clicked that link. Um, Another one is to use unique text for hyperlinks with different destinations, but to use the same text for links that go to the same destination page. So if, um, say, if you have a CTA for the contact page, um, the same CTA is used throughout the website if you're linking it to the contact page. Um, also very good for SEO, search engine optimization, uh, just in the background. Um, click here isn't great for your SEO and backlinking and internal linking and stuff. Um, whereas, you know, kind of if, if you're linking to um, a, like a main service page or something like that, that has a keyword in it, it does have a little bit of juice on, on Google. Or so I hear. Google will never confirm. But that is generally accepted as as a as a given. Um, we also want to front load important information in sentences and paragraphs. So, um, front loading important information. What can I give as, as an example of this? Um, 
I'm just trying to think of an example and my brain has gone completely blank. So basically kind of with, with front loading and um, you're not hiding um, the meat and the most important information further on down the line. So if, if you, if you say, if you're, you're advertising a bus leaving at half 10 and um, that would be the front loaded part of the sentence. So the first few words are exactly the information that is most important. Any description after that can be after that. That's fine. Um, you know, kind of we'll go with the bus analogy here. Um, so bus leaves at half past 10 and um, stopping at this, 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 um, you know, kind of whatever. Um, rather than for a bus visiting this location, this location, this location, it will leave at 1030. So we're just getting the most important information up front. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to uh, visit uh, kind of a few um, different uh, conditions and capabilities. Um, so we're, we're going to have a look at Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease because this is a, an incredibly interesting one that is often overlooked. Um, so I've, I've been, as part of my own personal journey as a website owner, um, one of my well, two of my main things this year is to get my website fully accessible. I know it has issues at the moment. Um, I'm working on it. Um, but also to make it fully um, sustainable or carbon neutral. Um, so as part of that, I have been looking at what different users are going to need from the website and to accommodate as many people as possible. Um, and Parkinson's disease isn't really covered a lot um, in a lot of material. Um, so kind of a lot of it would be physical and um, so we've got the hand tremors um and kind of makes moving around the screen um with a mouse quite difficult um sometimes using a keyboard can be difficult um so small close together website elements can be hard to select um so they they, they may click on the wrong link or select the wrong website um so when you're writing website copy um from this perspective uh it's important to keep very clear sections and um, so say if you're talking about one service you've got it separated from another one so you don't have which is it's kind of old school but it's still popular with with some people like they'll they'll literally have a list of like four hyperlinks in a row um, and for somebody that is fine using a mouse and, you know, kind of can just click, 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 that's fine. But if somebody is struggling to navigate the website um, using a mouse, uh, then it's going to be more difficult if it's all close together. So just it, it's more kind of around the, the layout of the page, I think. But it's still something to keep in mind when you are writing the website text is what sections are going where um, and why you're putting them there as well. Uh, so Parkinson's can also affect some people's memory, reasoning and problem solving. Um, so content must not be time limited or the user should be able to extend the time limit. Um, this is this is kind of coming from a sales perspective more than anything else. So I think we've we've all seen those um, kind of countdown timers and that kind of thing, which I'm not a fan of anyway. But, um, you know, kind of oh, you have 30 seconds to do this, or you have, you know, kind of even, I'm going to cover a capture in a second, um, but, you know, kind of timing out that kind of thing. Um, they need to be able to extend the time limit of that happening. Um, also, just in general, um, and a generally good thing, which is if you have menu items that are a drop down list or you have navigation um, options, they need to be on the same order on every page. Um, so we want to avoid, say, if you have um, a list of 30 products on a page and um, try to keep them in the same um, list, uh, sorry, the same order on every page rather than kind of mixing and matching and just listing them whenever and wherever. Uh, complex text jargon or poorly laid out text should be avoided. So again, this is just general good, good ideas to keep it simple and clear. Um, kind of there's jargon is a is a big issue for for many industries and um, it's best avoided unless it absolutely can't be avoided um but if it absolutely can't be avoided it needs to be explained um in and kind of when when i was helping um the nda of of ireland kind of there there were you know very complex um 
issues to to chat about and you know kind of a lot of reports and stuff but there's there's always a way of making it more accessible and more understandable um i think from the top of my head kind of we we did have um you know you you can always uh, include a summary at the top or at the bottom i prefer at the top because then people can see exactly what they're looking for um in in very easy easy to understand text um, easy to understand language, sorry. Um, so, like I said before, they don't need a dictionary or a thesaurus to understand what the page is about. Um, you know, kind of good, good copy, good content is um, understandable by all. So it it shouldn't be, um, you know, it 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 shouldn't need a, a university degree to to understand. Um, and again, capture challenges uh, can be a serious problem, uh, both for, for Parkinson's disease um, and also those with visual impairments. Um, and Cloudflare recently found that users take an average of 32 seconds to complete a capture challenge, um, which can be incredibly frustrating for a user. Um, so if, if we're thinking about accessibility from their point of view, it's frustrating they're not going to want to interact with your website again it's going to it's going to give them a, a bad impression of your business of your website um but also from a business perspective uh you know you 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 want to make the website as easy to use as possible for everyone so you want to convert as many people as possible if if somebody cannot kind of complete a capture challenge um on on your site that is essentially a client or a customer that's been lost um there are uh, alternatives out there there are um different options out there um but i know that a lot of the the capture um challenges that involve um not logistics but kind of you know matching up imagery and um kind of matching and I, I did one recently where it was um kind of rotate the image to be uh the same as this picture um and I found it frustrating um and kind of you know I I, I don't have Parkinson's disease so I can't imagine what somebody um you know with Parkinson's disease would even make of that they'd probably just click out and leave to be honest with you um so yeah then we have uh, neurodivergence. So around one in five people um, are neurodivergent. Um, so we've we've got dyslexia, ADHD, dyspraxia, autism, and Tourette's syndrome. And um, that isn't a complete list. It's not an exhaustive list, but that is some of them. Um, and we're going to have a look at kind of um, a, a few examples of of how to write copy um, and how to lay out copy for for some of these. Um, if if we aren't catering to people that um kind of are neurodivergent um that's that's a that's a fifth of your your website um traffic that that isn't getting serviced and isn't isn't connecting with you um so that's that's a that's a serious issue um so with neurodivergency um challenges can include again not an exhaustive list and not everybody and um, that is neurodivergent is going to have this but um difficulties concentrating or staying focused sensory overload information overload um struggling with visual noise um difficulty reading writing and spelling and information retention um so there's there's quite a few different things to take into consideration here um and we could do an an, an entire presentation uh, just on on these things and how to how to cater um to 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 this particular audience um but we'll have to do with a few a few slides anyway um so again uh we're helping users to skim through text and get what they need from it so we're writing in smaller paragraphs with simple sentences that you know kind of a maximum of 20 20 words uh, three sentences per paragraph. That's what we're looking at. Um, always use descriptive buttons. So instead of click here, describe what the button does, like download the ebook and um, add subtitles to videos. You'll find that there is a lot of repetition with this kind of stuff, um, but it's it's often overlooked. Um, so I've, I've put it under under different uh, um, different situations. Um, and again, navigation is the same on every page. Um, you, you know, you, you want your visitor to feel like they know exactly where they're going on the website. They shouldn't have to hunt down a particular page or a particular function. You know, we, we, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to interact with us. Um, and links are always indicated in the same way. 
So, um, so hyperlinks. So if you are underlining hyperlinks, stick with underlining hyperlinks. If you're bolding your hyperlinks, make sure all of them are bolded. Um, there's, there's nothing more frustrating than uh, trying to click on something that just won't click. Um, so just consistency is, is key here. Um, use the active voice. This is this is generally um, a good idea anyway. Good copywriting is using the active voice. Um, it's it's easier to consume and it's easier to connect with as well. So the passive voice isn't um, it isn't great. Uh, so just try try to avoid it. Um, avoid using metaphors as well, um, especially for people with autism. Uh, they can find them challenging to understand. Um, if you're a little bit more literal, that tends to be easier to understand um, summarize the main points at the end of articles um, as, as well as uh, you can include a table of contents as well, which again is just best practice um, to help people navigate what's going on. Um, use commas instead of hyphens in your sentences. Um, so this is an interesting one. And if anyone else is a little bit um, of a nerd when it comes to language, uh, I found this fascinating. Um, it's it's all about uh, kind of how the, the brain um, and again, I forgot that word. How the brain um, consumes, processes, and understands uh, the the sentences in front of them. So commas are easier for the majority of people to understand and to work through in a sentence than a hyphen. Um, same with lowercase letters. Obviously, apart from um, nouns and apart from uh, the beginning of a sentence, obviously we still want to we still want to capitalize those. Um, but avoid all uppercase. Uh, that's I mean in, in a in in kind of um slang that's shouting anyway online we don't want to be shouting at people um but yeah lowercase letters um same with um titles uh kind of i'm a personal uh fan of just doing um sentence case so literally the the first letter of the first word in a sentence is capitalized the rest are all lowercase um the brain it actually um it actually takes that as a stop a capital letter is actually a stop for most people. So when you have a capitalized, um, even if we look up here, so things to consider neurodivergency, most people's brains will actually um, process the capital as something to stop on. So if you're looking to help people consume the content in a, in a streamlined fashion, um, we just wanna have the little capital up here, it's grammatically correct. Um, and then the rest would be um, lowercase. Okay, so getting the balance right. Uh, there is quite an aversion for a lot of copywriters um, to writing accessible copy or even understanding what accessible copy is. Um, and I'm very aware that was a big generalization. Um, but for, for many people, they, they feel that... Um, a brand's personality or the brand voice um, is hindered by accessible copy. So a website isn't as creative if it has accessible copy on it. The use of emojis, emoticons, memes, slang, acronyms, and metaphors are incredibly popular in marketing. Um, they're incredibly effective in, in marketing. Um, they're a great way to connect with people, connect with your target audience um, and different, uh, uh, I'll have to dig out the, the facts and the stats, but different generations do react differently to different emoticons or memes or slang, that kind of stuff. Um, but the two, co the, the two can coexist, absolutely. You just need to know your audience and you need to make sure that you're following the, the basics you know, kind of, we we want the best practice in there. And then, do you know what? If if you want to throw a meme in there, throw a meme in there. You can always explain why it's funny if you really want to. You know, it's 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 finding that balance that is that is right for your audience and your brand as well. And um, you know, kind of, there there are plenty of um, very inclusive brands that successfully use slang and memes and acronyms and stuff it's it's all about finding that balance um so i'm i'm a big believer that you can have both um i know that, that there is a little bit of a debate about you know kind of um creative writing and and making it accessible at the same time but i i i'm a firm believer that you can absolutely um 
So maintaining standards and governance. So how to make sure that um, the copy that for, for your website is created, it's accessible and it's maintained as accessible. Um, so we need buy-in from the top down. Um, so if you are part of an organization, if you have multiple departments, it's important that everyone has buy-in of why this is important. Um, there, there's there's plenty of facts and stats that you that you know kind of you can bring out and um, you know kind of you can even use user testing um, to to really highlight if there are gaps where your copy is falling down. Um, Ongoing training is essential. Uh, you know, things are constantly changing um, in the copy world, 100%, in marketing, 100%, um, accessibility, of course. Um, and, and it's important to, to maintain that you're on top of everything as much as we humanly can. We've got a lot of other things going on, I know, but just staying abreast of everything is really important. Um, if you are new to accessible copy, um, do a content audit. And um, there is a there's a fabulous book um by Christina Howe Warson, um, which I can I can pop over the link and everything. Uh it's um website. No, what is it? Oh, I can't even remember it. I will pop it over anyway. It's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. I don't have it with me today. I have a bookshelf behind me. I thought I had it. I don't. Um, but I will definitely um send that over if if anyone is interested in the name. Um, she's very good at content audits. Um, it is a step by step kind of thing of um the content life cycle. Um, and part of that is content audit. Um, so that includes website text. It includes marketing materials. Um. Clear content guidelines for future team members. This is essential. And this is something that a lot of organizations struggle with. It's something that um, myself and my team do quite a bit, as well as the content audits. Um, so, you know, we've we've worked with public health um, dist um public health uh, departments. We've we've done obviously the the um the NDA in Ireland, uh, you know, kind of whether it's creating uh content creation guidelines for you know we've, we've done a few small towns in Canada you know kind of every every organization needs this whether it is a small um you know kind of e-commerce store or you know kind of if if they have online content they should have um branding guidelines for that um so good content guidelines um include language that is to be used isn't to be used um you know kind of do you use contractions so do you write do not or don't um you know kind of and and the consistency as well so how do you write the time how do you write the date in all of your online content we we want to make sure that this is consistent across the board um and the idea is is that Everyone, once they've handed these content guidelines, they can go ahead and write content in your brand voice uh, using the correct tone and um, with the correct formatting across all of your marketing materials, all of your website materials. And um, so that is social media and, um, you know, kind of and, and it, it often includes, um, you know, examples of imagery that can be used and that kind of stuff. So that's. That's essential. Um, it's also really handy when you're onboarding new team members as well. They can they they can literally have a checklist of is this on brand? Is this accessible? Is this not accessible? Um, avoid relying on AI. Already mentioned it. Um, content for humans needs a con needs a human touch. AI is devoid of human emotion. It's a void. It, it's it's um, it's it, it's just very is passionate there's uh there's there's nothing there it, it lacks description um and it reads like a robot wrote it so if you are using ai that's great but just make sure that you're editing it um and you know kind of make sure that it is accessible as well um ai isn't known for writing accessible content um so yeah and then regular check-ins. Uh, this isn't said and forget it. Uh, said it and forget it. Um, this is something that is is a constant. So um, I always try to do um, a content audit um, of my own site at least once a year. Um, if I was uh, really on it and uh, as much as what I'd like to be doing it, I'd be doing it once a quarter. Uh, it depends on the size of your website, depends on the amount of marketing materials you have. 
um you know kind of it's it's a it's a big job for a lot of a lot of companies um a lot of organizations um but once a year is fantastic to to go through it make sure everyone is up to speed um the stuff that has been published is accessible is on brand um and is communicating with your target audience um the the way that uh, we want it to um but yeah, that's pretty much me done. Um, I hope that you all got something from it. I see that we've got um a few Q's and A's. I'm gonna stop uh, share screen share screening screen sharing. Um, but yeah, all good, wonderful. Thank you. That was wonderful. So yeah. I really um appreciated everything you had to share and I know we got we're getting lots of reactions coming in too from all the attendees so a quick nuts and bolts questions that I'll ask first and then um we'll kind of go down through the questions that have been submitted um for everyone attending if you put your questions in the Q&A panel that's the best way to make sure that we see them rather than in the chat um do you have a link to your slides that you can share either now, or if not, maybe you can send them to me later and we can distribute them with the video. Absolutely, yep. Let me, uh, I can open it up. Absolutely, to viewers, that's no bother at all. I will pop that in the chat now. Okay, wonderful, thank you so much. No worries. All right, so the, First question from Kim was, how do you balance between accessibility and SEO or SEM, especially based on keyword and Google searches? Yes. <laughs> a, very, a, a question I get asked a lot. Um, yeah, it's tricky. Um, so I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you are writing helpful content and you are writing um, thorough, in-depth content, um, then you should be naturally hitting those keywords. Um, now, of, of course, you know, kind of when you go to, to um, kind of a website that has been existing for a longer amount of time, it's a little bit more difficult um, because, you know, kind of you're targeting new keywords that might not come up naturally. Um, but in general, um, you should be hitting them naturally anyway. Um, I mean, if, if people are searching for those terms, um, then you should be speaking about them on the website. Um, it's 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 a science and an art, I think, um, you know, kind of balancing the two. It, it isn't easy, um, but I'm, I would much prefer to write for the reader than the search engines, um, 100%. Um, I don't know, is, is that a controversial opinion or not? <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, I think I've seen a lot, though, actually, that Google, like some of the more recent updates, and correct me if you think I'm wrong about this, but some of the more recent updates have really been about that, like helpful content, and people that were writing content that wasn't really being engaged with, with users, like maybe there was a high bounce rate, or it wasn't being shared, or they were mm -hmm. able to tell, like, in more recent updates, those people have been losing ranking. And so I do think like the short sentences, the readability, including headings, like all of that stuff that helps accessibility can really help SEO. And it's not really Absolutely. a trade-off. Do you yeah. agree? Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the helpful content update, um, it, it was a godsend to most copywriters because, you know, if, if you, if you generally enjoy writing to the reader, which is something that I prefer, you know, kind of Google is, actively uh punishing you know kind of spam and it's actively not promoting the the old style keyword just you know kind of um cramming it in there keyword stuffing sorry um you know that's getting punished now so good seo going forward is all about writing useful content that actually has meaning and is helping and um, hence helpful content update but yeah yeah great uh, so Jean asked about the U.S. reading level. Jean said uh, that they've seen the fifth grade being the reading level to use. Uh, but I know you talked about seventh and eighth grade. I have some thoughts about this, but I wanted to see if you wanted to add some clarity on that. Yeah, so I chose that stat because it was the the, the most commonly used one. Um, I have heard across the board a few different 
levels that are commonly accepted. Um, I think as as long as you are, depending on your own audience, obviously, but as long as you're not overcomplicating things, um, you know, kind of if there is a more simple way of writing it, then write it in the more simple way. Um, but yeah, I, I I've I've heard uh kind of a variety of different um reports as to the the levels for sure. Um, what 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 have you read, Amber? So there is a, I call it WCAG, pretty close to how you pronounce it, Web Content Accessibility Guideline that is specific. It's triple A. Um, and so that is, we have a bunch of information about that in the documentation for our Accessibility Checker plugin. So I'll put a link in for that. And then also the link to reading level in WCAG. Um, but what that references is it says lower secondary level. So mm. for us, we interpret that as eighth grade or ninth grade, like somewhere in between, because depending on where you are in the world, secondary level probably starts slightly different. But it is, I think, higher than the the fifth grade that Jean has maybe heard. Um, mm. So like in it, our accessibility checker, we check for reading level and we do it based on like a ninth grade is what we yeah. do. So. Sorry, I am just popping uh, Christina's book in the chat there as well. I did remember it's content strategy for the web. There we go. Christina, how awesome. I did. I remembered eventually. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that is a that is a, a good point um, for sure about reading levels. I think, yeah, we'll, we'll go with uh, the WCAG for sure. <laughs> yeah, I so there was sort of a follow up on that. Kelsey asked, do you recommend the Flesh Kincaid? test specifically for measuring reading level are there benefits to this test compared to other reading level measurements particularly when it comes to accessible copy do you have any familiarity with all the different tests that are out there yeah there there are a bunch of different tests for sure um and i will find another link gina sorry um yeah so that there, there are i i personally like using hemingway app I do. It's it's kind of it's it's to the point. Um, it's yeah. It, it's got um, it's it's free as well for a lot of people. Um, I think the Grammarly does have that functionality as well. Um, we we use Grammarly in 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 our agency. Um, so you you've got a few choices there. Um, they should all work to the same level. Um, but uh, yeah, I I I, th I think it's personal preference. And the Hemingway app, that's um, HemingwayApp.com. I think it's Hemingway. So talking about, I hadn't heard of that one before. Oh, okay. It's fantastic. Um, yes. Yeah. HemingwayApp.com. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So it's, I've just opened it up here. So yeah, it'll show you passive voice. It will show you uh, kind of if there's easier ways to say things, it'll highlight the specific sentences that um, need to be changed. Um, and then kind of there is a readability. So if if uh, if you open up that link, um it'll it'll give you the readability as as grade six straight away, um, just of the example. Um so yeah, it's it's handy, it's simple, it highlights everything you need to use. Um yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's similar yeah. to Grammarly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. The other one that I might shout out, so when we do writing, um, we use the Yoast SEO plugin in WordPress. And that has a readability that uses like more of a reading ease score from Flesh King yeah. versus a grade level. Um, and what we do is we usually try to get the green in the reading ease in Yoast. And then we look at the grade level in our accessibility checker plugin and we want it to be under ninth grade. Um, mm -hmm. And so we kind of do those two. Um, but I think like if you're looking for a specific one, like I like the Hemingway app does like it gives you a grade level also because I think you got to reference sort of on the grade level if you're trying to reference the AAA success criterion. So yeah, yeah. Um, Peter asked Peter or Peter said he would be interested in your opinion about including a reading time on blog posts. Peter doesn't mm -hmm. like it unless it was something like quick, medium, long versus a number of minutes because obviously different people have different reading speeds. Do you have thoughts about this? Yeah um yeah so i mean you you could you could give a word count if you wanted to um for sure you you could yeah i 
I'm not a particular fan of the reading time either because I'm quite a fast reader. Um, you know, kind of if I see something that says, oh, this is a 10 minute read, I'll get it done in, you know, kind of like five minutes. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's a tricky one. It is, uh, you, you could always uh, put, you know, kind of short, medium, long. You could put word count. Um, you can also, um, if you really wanted to get into it, you know, kind of you, you can put complexity or, um, like level of like it's it's introductory it's intermediary it's expert level um kind of knowledge base um depending on your audience of course um but yeah there's 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 many different ways of doing it but yeah I'm not a fan of the it takes this many minutes as well um just because it's everyone reads differently yeah we so we have that on ours now from a very long time ago our website is old and we're in the process of redesigning our website and I was like we have to get rid of this because I don't <laughs> think it's very accessibility friendly to be like, it takes 10 minutes. And what if somebody's like only halfway done and they've been sitting there for 10 minutes and then they're going to feel bad about themselves or something? I don't know. It's exactly. Just, yeah. 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 No, it's, it's yeah. It's a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Lisa asked, any tips for how to promote your accessible writing to a potential client, such as a web developer or someone who wants blog posts? Lisa says, I imagine it's a matter of educating them that less is more and um, flowery, uh, less is more and flowery with standardized testing. Oh, SAT standardized testing words is not better writing. Oh yeah. So trying to explain that longer words doesn't necessarily make it better. Do you have any yep. ways on you can communicate that to clients or recommendations? Oh, yes. So this, this is something that uh, kind of when, when I was originally getting started and, and finding uh, my, my first clients and stuff, you know, kind of really selling them on copywriting and professional writing. Um, you know, is quite an issue. Um, I would say one of, so I have written a few blog posts on it and I'll send them that or kind of, I will literally just be like, if if I'm on, um, if I'm on a, a call, I'll pick out like the five main points and just run them through it. And um, I'm incredibly lucky that most of the, the, the companies that we work with are digital agency owners. So they're already pretty much up to speed on why it's important to get a professional to write. And um, I can definitely share um, my uh, blog post on how to sell copywriting as a service if, if, if you'd like that. Um, I'll pop that. That is from uh, the admin bar. Um, I will open that up in chat and I will share that now. Yeah, that would be great if you can have a link to that. I'm sure there's lots of people who'd be interested. I think probably that is one of the worst things about website projects for clients is getting copy. And if you haven't Absolutely. figured out how to sell your clients on having you or a vendor that you use write the copy, then you end up in this land where either it takes forever or they give you like one paragraph. And you're like, yep. How am I supposed to make a whole page out of this one paragraph? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah or, or it's or it's just kind of like a, a paragraph and a word doc that's emailed to you or a pdf and it's just like what are we meant to do with this or like bullet point notes yeah i've, I've seen that quite a bit as well <laughs> um so there were a couple of comments about directions and we did chat about it a little bit which you might not have noticed because you were busy giving your phenomenal presentation um so uh, FJ had said on the topic of directions to right or left, this may be nitpicky, but too often we see the, and then it says in bracket, the blank content below or the comments mm -hmm. below. And they would say, I use the following con, they, they use following instead of below um, for mm -hmm. comments. And then there, yeah. And so in the chat, we sort of had a, a slight conversation about like, before or below or like the the vertical positioning I think is a little different from the left right positioning because it can be referenced with reading order for mm -hmm. a screen reader how they might hear and listening order but I don't know if you have any other thoughts on positioning I, th I think you you guys have have kind of already covered that to be honest it is tricky it is very tricky um yeah I would say kind of before after following um you know would, would be the most popular ways of doing it for sure okay um so julie said you mentioned using left aligned in general do you mean specifically with lists or all text 
I I meant a uh, website text, um, so kind of just web copy in general, um, for sure. Alt text, um, I actually don't know. Um, I should probably look into that. Yeah, um, I'm not sure on alt text. Um, I know that um, is it is it mm, Mimi Millie did a fantastic uh talk on alt text there, possibly last year at this point. Mm -hmm. But that is a fantastic talk. If you want to go and watch that, and it's all about alt text. I'm really sorry, I, I can't remember her name right now. But um, I was watching that, and uh, yeah, she's, yeah, she's Meg, very good. Meg Miller. Meg. Yeah, mm -hmm. Meg Miller. There we go. I had MM. It's just mm in the head <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so i think they were saying like all not alt but all text on the website but Sorry. what i'll say is because i know you were you were basically saying that like almost everything should be left aligned yeah. um and we will use a rule of thumb of like if it's going to wrap to more than two rows it shouldn't be centered so mm. even if yeah. you want the content block to be centered on your page if it's like five lines of text it still needs to be left aligned you just have the container centered is yeah. that do you have any sort of rule like that about how you handle centered versus left align and obviously we almost never right align anything right yeah 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 just the, the idea of that gives me a migraine <laughs> <laughs> um yes yeah so yeah no i i would i would pretty much agree with that and i'm going to be completely honest i do not build my own website anymore so i i pretty much like i'll, I'll just like lovely web designer please please take this and and make sure it's right and um, he does so <laughs> uh so Denev asked I know you talked a little bit about AI and how you need to edit it um yes. but do you have you tried using either chat GPT or other AI models and um are there some that are I know you've talked like you can't use only that so I'm not going to ask you that mm -hmm. question but I'm going to kind of riff on his question a little bit here and ask like are there any that do better than others or require less editing or maybe have like a better starting point in your experience mm -hmm. I think that as a starting point and as a way of overcoming dreaded writer's block most AI writers will get you a starting point and um, for sure uh, my my main concern with AI writers is when people literally just use it and don't even bother reading it and then just publish it. That that's one of my main issues. And and kind of I know that um Margaret popped in the chat there that uh kind of one of her clients uh used ChatGPT, added their own personal story in on top, and then published it. That's that's fine. As a writer, I'm like, oh ChatGPT. But if if that is the best option for you, then that's the best option for you. Um, I know that obviously, um, you know, kind of Chat GPT is is the main go to. I've seen a lot of um, a lot of people do fantastic things once they've trained it to understand their unique voice. So I mean, if if it's one company that you're writing for, um, then it can get up to speed. I'm not as good as a human. I'm you know yeah, <laughs> and everything needs to be fact checked. Um, I know that um phrase does have an ai ai writer i've heard mixed reviews um writing at scale i think is another one and um, i did try that out i've been trying them out to kind of feel them out and see if any of them are any good um and i just they're just so bland to me there's there's no personality in there and and i have noticed as well uh, from from an accessibility point of view a lot of stereotyping, you know, because because I'm I'm based in Ireland, um, you know, kind of and and you know, I, I what what did I try the other day? Um, I was like, oh, you know, kind of, I'm thinking of setting up a company that does this. We're based in Ireland. Uh, can you create a few names? And they were pretty racist. I'm not gonna lie. It was just like, come on now, you know, like talking about leprechauns and pots of gold and that kind of thing. And it was just like. Yeah, so be very, very careful uh, with using AI for, for that kind of stuff. I know none of us here would use it for, for that kind of stuff, but yeah, it's it, it it's it's not perfect for sure. Um, but uh, also I, th I think Grammarly has an AI uh, kind of module as well. Um, haven't, haven't used that, um, but what else is that? We use Surfer SEO for a lot of our stuff. We use Surfer SEO, fantastic tool. Um, and I know um, quite, um, Quite a few people have used it uh, for for writing. Uh, we haven't used it for writing, but I've heard good things about it. Um, so yeah, that's another tool that I have not heard of. So I'm learning a bunch of new tools that I'm going to have to go play and check I out love with. Yeah. SEO. 
absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. Um, it's it's great for a uh, kind of comparison. Um, it's uh, it's also good for um, Gina surfer SEO, like surfing on the sea, but with SEO. <laughs> um, my accent is terrible. Uh, but um. Yeah, so it, it, it analyzes the, the top 10 um, performing websites for a particular key phrase, and it'll show you what keywords to put in to hopefully help you compete with them. Uh, I think it's fabulous. We, we use it on everything. Um, and also it's good for keyword research and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, highly recommend. Awesome. Um, yeah, my opinion on chat GPT is I almost always like if I ever ask it something about accessibility half the time it's wrong so I'm just oh, like yeah, eh, yeah. yeah just absolutely like, it's just like oh because yeah. and, th and this is it kind of I know somebody mentioned up in the chat I didn't catch the name but it, it's pretty much just scraping the internet of all the information that's out there and um, you know it may not be a hundred percent correct in the first place but that's what it's basing its knowledge on so it it can't replace human human knowledge at all so yeah, <laughs> yeah. do you have any thoughts on which fonts or types of fonts to use or avoid for readability? Um, I'm not great at design. Uh, I am a copywriter by trade. Um, I know is it serif serif fonts are meant to be um kind of, and I know that all the designers in chat are um going to uh kind of uh be unhappy. But when it comes to um kind of dyslexia and 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 other kind of um issues like that I know that uh, Comic Sans is meant to be very easy to read um but uh, <laughs> it's not the prettiest let's be honest <laughs> oh man I don't <laughs> okay I loved your talk now you're gone no I'm just kidding <laughs> oh I know yeah <laughs> so I have a uh, another see we both write for the admin bar <laughs> I have a, an article on the admin bar that I'll pop in the chat about choosing accessible fonts and there's um different things about making sure like you don't have confusing like the number one and the lowercase l and the capital i should not all look the same like that yeah. kind of thing i think it can be really helpful for people with certain types of disabilities um, absolutely and I, I think that there are a few i do have uh one of my wonderful writers well my, my project manager now uh riley did a um a blog post on this um specifically and I will dig that out now um where is it let's have a look I think it was uh for dyslexia bear with me two seconds I will dig it out um but yeah it, it's kind of like the m and the n can look the same um j's and l's ones as well uh easy use fronts okay so there is a font made specifically for people with dyslexia. It's called Open Dyslexic. Um, it's uh, it it just really differentiates between them. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna pop this in the chat anyway. Uh, I'd be careful about recommending that too much though, because a lot of the scientific yeah. studies I've shown have actually like when they do research, it doesn't actually have any benefit. That really? Font. There we yeah. go. I learned something it's, new every that's day. That's a hard one. Like that's one that I see sometimes in like we're talking about like I think, you know, this is an interesting piece. Like where can you bring in a copywriter and where do you need to have like a subject matter expert? Yeah. Or like or even if you're hiring someone, you probably have to like like I'm sure you have clients where you write stuff and then you're like, okay, now you're the expert on being a doctor or whatever right yeah. so go oh, read our stuff before Absolutely. you publish it right and 100%. and I've noticed that one sometimes on websites like a hosting company is writing about accessibility and they're like use this font and I'm like okay well you don't you haven't done the research <laughs> Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's absolutely. Um, so yeah. it's yeah, the definitely do your research. Um, I'm not a font expert at all. Um, I could I can tell you how to write great copy and I can tell you how to, you know, kind of, you know, can increase your conversions and everything, but um, yeah, kind of my design is not my forte. Um, but yeah, it it's and it's an interesting point, uh, coming back to you know, speaking to to topic matter experts as well, you know, kind of whenever we work with with agencies or their clients. You, we always interview them first. And I think that's a big part of writing accessible copy is you get to know their business. You get to know their 
their clients, their customers, whoever it is that they're targeting, and you understand exactly what they're looking for. Um, so we make sure that we do that with with every new client, um, and it, it'll it cut down a lot of the issues going forward if, if you are writing copy for them. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's great that you like get to know them and what their voice is and, and all of that kind of stuff. So um, do you have an opinion? I don't know if I have an answer to this, but Phoebe asks, we use a lot of M dashes to break up thoughts. Should they be using commas? <laughs> M dashes are, uh, we're, we're getting into the nitty gritty of dashes and commas. and Yeah, and, and so commas. maybe you can explain just in case anyone doesn't know, what is an M dash? And should yeah. you be using a comma instead? So an M dash is, is, a, is a much longer dash. So that's basically it. There's, there's, it, it has a very specific name. All punctuation has, uh, you know, kind of unique names to describe it. Um, but yeah, so an M dash is a longer dash. And um, you will find M dashes used much more in the US than the UK, which is an interesting uh, point. Um, but yeah, I would say take it with a grain of salt. If you really love using M dashes and it, it's not exactly going, it, it's not going to turn anyone away from your company. It's not going to make it um unreadable. But apparently commas make it a little bit easier to skim the sentence. So I'm not saying don't use M dashes. My my lovely writer Christina will cry if I tell her to stop using M dashes. She is absolutely loves them. Um so yeah, kind of and and this is it as well, you know, kind of sometimes we have to pick and choose. You know, it's it's you know kind of um okay, Fiona, you do use the M dash in the UK. <laughs> whoops um maybe it's island maybe it's island that they don't really uh use it but uh i have found that uh u.s companies are um, very keen on them uh for sure um which was something that i had to learn to get used to when i first started uh writing internationally anyway um but yeah kind of you know if if you love using as long as it's grammatically correct there's nothing wrong with using it. It's just kind of a, a general guideline to, to make it easier. So I use dashes a lot in my writing. Um, so yeah, as long as it's grammatically correct, you, you're all good. Great. So another kind of like nitty gritty question, where do you fall on um, using contractions or not? You mentioned that a little bit, like, is it better for readability to have don't or do not? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's down to formality, really. So, um, for me, I always use contractions, and um, that's just a personal preference. And this this comes down to uh, kind of that question of uh, brand personality and voice, um, as well as being accessible. Um, exactly, Oz. So, do not sounds more stern where don't is casual. So, um, it's more informal to use contractions. It's more approachable. Um, it's it's very formal, very stern. Uh, to 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 use the the full um the full version of it. Um, so I'm a big fan of contractions. Great. Uh, let's see. Um, Emily was wondering how can a website designer move into more content strategy work? What resources or courses do you recommend, or if there are any certifications? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, if if you if you Google content courses, there are a thousand and one people hawking different courses, as there is with everything. Um, I would uh, highly recommend uh, Christina Halvorsen's um uh, book. That is is like um a little content bible for me. To be honest with you, I will reread that once a year. Um, it it takes you through every single step. Um, you can um. Uh, you can, uh, <laughs> in terms of like a general course, it depends on the, the aspect of content strategy that you're most interested in. So if you're looking into content audits, um, that is its own kind of unique thing. If you're looking into copywriting, that's its own unique thing. Just like with anything else, you can really, really kind of filter down to very specific things to specialize in. Um, so kind of my agency does content strategy, copywriting, content marketing, pretty much if it's a written word online, we do it. Um, Whereas, uh, you know, kind of other people will um, focus in on uh, landing pages for scientific companies, that kind of stuff. So 
I think that would be my my first recommendation is to really focus on what you enjoy doing. Um, so is it reporting? Is it optimization? What kind of stuff is it? I would start with Christina's book, to be honest with you. Um, there is a bunch of other books um, that I could recommend. But if you're brand new to it, um, I would start looking at, uh, looking at my bookshelf behind me. Um, that is what I would start with for sure, um, in terms of content strategy, it's pretty much from step one to completion to ongoing optimization. Um, if you're interested more in the creative side of copywriting, um, there is something called The Artist's Way. Um, it's very hit or miss for people. Either you'll love it or you'll hate it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's good at kind of getting over writer's block and, and finding your way as a writer. Um, I'm just trying to think of, I have a thousand and one books in my head that I can recommend for this. But if you're brand new to it, start with Christina Howe Wolfson's book. Um, yeah, see, Christina the Writer's Way was a miss for me. It's very hit or miss. You'll either love it or hate it, um, for sure. Uh, oh, um, oh, Everybody Writes by Anne Handley. Anne Handley is one of my favorite writers. Um, she uh, She's currently at Marketing Profs, I think. Um, fantastic. Very, very accessible. Very easy to read. Um very uh very conversational um also her newsletter is is very good as well um if it comes out every sunday uh so feel free to sign up for that as well uh she's she's very good um what else in terms of courses i've heard mixed things about um copywritingcourse.com i think it's spelled both with k's um I'm, I wouldn't be a fan, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I know that HubSpot do a bunch of free courses on content strategy. Um, there's also Brian Dean from Backlinko, um, which I think got bought, bought by SEM Rush. Um, but, uh, he's fantastic for, for kind of um, SEO work. For sure there's there's a there's a bunch of things to look into there <laughs> yeah thank you so much for that incredible list we are pretty much at time we have our captioner for another 15 minutes but if you need to go i want to be respectful of your time so let me know where you sit if you have a little bit more time we can try and do like a lightning round like i'll ask you questions and you can try to answer real fast <laughs> but, I but if you do. want to yeah. sign off totally fine so no no it's fine it's half five at okay. night here so I'm just having dinner after this. So we'll do a lightning round. Oh, okay. <laughs> no meetings that you have to run off to. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can go real fast. Um, Janelle asked, should all H1s include the page title? H1s uh, should- Like, does it need to be the same as the actual like page title that's in the browser tab? Do you have an opinion on that? Technically it should. Technically, it, I mean, it, it should always include your main keyword. 100% it should, it should include your main keyword. In terms of SEO, it it should. Uh, content camp, thank you, Amy. I'm going to have a look at that. Um, Yeah. It may be personal opinion. It should do. doesn't have to. I'll try to keep it shorter, Amber. I know I'm rambling. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. All right, let's see. Um, Peter asked, or Peter said, you... Uh... Actually, I don't know how to summarize that one and ask a question about it. So I'm going to skip it. I'm sorry, Peter. Um, let's see. Do you have an opinion on accessible format for phone numbers, like using periods versus dashes? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I know a good answer for this one. So if you don't, that's totally fine. I don't have a good answer for that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think maybe what I would say my guess is, is that it's different in different countries and you should yeah. try to use the most recommend most recognized format in that country because it's what people are going to see. Like the periods are yeah. trendy, but I don't actually think like if you were to hand your phone number to someone and write it down, I don't, we don't ever do that anymore, but let's say you did, like you probably wouldn't write it with periods. You'd write it with the dashes. Yeah. So I would go for dashes be. over anything, but yeah. and kind of in, in Ireland and the UK, we don't use either. We just full number. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's very geographically, uh, yeah, specific. <laughs> specific. Um, yeah. Do you take, so Bjarne asked, are you taking the browser's different implementations of reading mode into consideration when you create copy at all? Have you like played around with how different browsers you can put it into reading mode and, and thought about that? Not really. No, honest, honest answer. Not really. Um, I will look into it though. 
Yeah. I have no idea how, what percent of people use that. I've never used it in my browser, but that doesn't, I mean, of course I'm not case study one, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let's see. Hilda said, going back to the SEO SEM balance, what exactly is the struggle? Are SEOs being used um, in general to draw more traffic from a business focus and less? Do you have any idea why people think there's a struggle there? Um, I think it goes back to pre-helpful content update world, for sure. I think going forward, it's it's there's not going to be so much of a, you know, this impression of there being a struggle. Um, I think that going forward, you know, kind of good content is helpful content and that's what works on the search engine. So that's what everyone's going to be doing. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a hark back to the old days of keyword stuffing and just keyword, keyword, keyword rather than helpful information. Okay. Um, and so I think this is a great question to end on. Uh, are there any approaches that you found particularly persuasive when trying to convince marketing teams to write more accessible copy? Uh, the person who asked this has found it difficult to convince people to change their writing style. So are we talking about a marketing team for one company? That's, and that would be sort the... of my assumption. Yeah. So if you so... have, if you're working in an organization that has a marketing team and like, I don't know, two or three people who've written copy a certain way for mm -hmm. five, 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. What have you found has been good to persuade them that maybe they need to adjust their writing style? Focusing on the end benefits for the piece. So rather than saying, this is how you do it, this is how you write, this is the best way of doing it. And um, you focus on how it's going to help the reader and how it's going to help them achieve their goals with that piece of writing it's because for, for most people writing is incredibly personal and if if you know kind of if, if you're commenting on their writing they take it personally because they've created it it's something that they spent hours writing and um, whereas if if you take that that personal level out of it and say hey i found this this new way of you know kind of this is working and this is working for other people. And this is, well, sometimes that doesn't work, but it's just focusing on, you know, kind of our, our readers are engaging with this piece. If, if they're particularly, um, if they're particularly uh, susceptible to um, stats and figures, you can go into the analytics and be like, okay, well, this piece was written in this style and it was read for 12 minutes on average and it converted this many people. Then, you know, kind of we need to emulate this style a bit more. That can be a way. If, if it's literally, you just want to kind of try to to strip out the personal side of it. And it is difficult. It is difficult um, for, for a lot of people. If, if they're professional writers, uh, they, they shouldn't take it personally, but some of us do because it is, writing is personal for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, just try to focus on the reader, what works for the reader and not on their particular writing. Yeah, I, I really like when you're saying like going back to what is the goal of the piece Yeah, and, and saying, you know, well, most of us have a reason why we're putting content on the web. We're not just like randomly writing stuff that we don't have an objective for, right? Mm -hmm. And and then figuring out like, is their current style achieving the objective or if it's written in a different way, does it? Like you were talking about metrics. I think that's great. So this has been so good, Abby. I really appreciate you coming and sharing your expertise with us. Um, so can you give everyone a quick reminder of where they could follow up with you or the content lab, um, maybe share your website and any social media platforms you're on. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. First of all, thank you, Amber and, and the wonderful team here as well. I uh, really enjoyed this. Um, absolutely wonderful. If you would like to get in touch with me, um, I will pop my website URL um, in the chat now. And uh, do, 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 because uh, we do not have the dot com. Uh, we have the dot a because we are based in Ireland. Um, but uh, yeah, feel free to, to have a look. You can always reach out to me um, on the presentation is my email address. If uh, if you wanted to reach out by email, um, that is directly to me. And um, we'd be lovely to, to chat to some of you um, for sure. That'd be fantastic. Uh, we're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. And uh, go enjoy writing accessible copy. <laughs>
Thank you. Um, I'm just going to wait one second to hit the in button because I have to make sure that we see the, uh, it goes all the captions go into the transcript, but thank you. And thanks everyone. And don't forget to tune in um, in two weeks where you can hear my adventures building my own WooCommerce website and how accessible or not it is.